Okay, so we're back out in the garden. Uh, the last couple of weeks have been extremely wet, so uh, we haven't got out, we haven't done much. Uh, today is cold, the ground's completely frozen, um, but there's plenty I need to do out here. Um, my daughter there in the background, uh, the boys off running up the garden. Say hello, Esme. Hello. <laughs> so today um, I'm going to uh, prune my red currant uh, bush down here. Um, and I'm going to propagate some of the cuttings from that. Um, it's a really easy way to grow stuff for free and increase your yield. You know, I bought one plant um, last year. It's grown really well last year, um, and I'm going to prune it back now. This is the right time to start pruning that back. I'm going to prune that back, um, and we're going to plant up the cuttings uh, and, and try and propagate a few more plants. And um, partly, we're going to put a couple more in the ground here. Um, so we can increase our yield and then my intention is to if i get a few going is to give some of them away you know encourage other people and uh, and start like a, a seed swap in the local area that's the plan anyway so um yeah let's get stuck in i'll show you how i'm going to do it okay so what we're going to do now is um is prune the red currant bush uh, it's similar with blackberries and and those sort of bushes but we want to get like a goblet shape so that it encourages air to, to get round the bush. Um, these ones that are crossing over in the middle, we're gonna get rid of them. So you're keeping sort of the middle of the plant open so that the air can flow through. Um, and obviously when we're cutting back as well, we're gonna encourage fresh growth for next year and hopefully a much better crop. So I'm just gonna cut these back um, to a bud, the nearest bud to the bottom. And always uh, try and cut at an angle as well, um, so that the water flows off. Um, these secateurs are not the sharpest, I need to resharpen them. Uh, that wasn't a great cut there. Um, but then this one we can cut into um, different, and probably cut this into two, and I'll plant this up, um, and we'll see if it grows for next year. So I'm going to carry on doing this, I'm going to prune this right back. So then all of the crossing members, and I'll cut back some of the, the new growth from last year as well. Um, and we'll use that as our cuttings for propagation. Um, and then once I finish that, we'll move on and I'll show you the uh, the potting up process. Okay, so we're in my little uh, potting sled, uh, shed slash uh, greenhouse that I built in a previous video. Um, you can see I've used uh, um, the old cardboard box from the packaging from this little greenhouse um, to make up a little potting uh, shelf obviously the more that I, I have in here this is probably gonna have to come out for you know to make room for seeds but again it's you know it's biodegradable I can use I'm using the waste uh, it hasn't cost me anything um, it was just the packaging from this so um, I'm just trying to make use of everything that I have and, and that's what this is all about is, is it showing you that garden doesn't have to cost a fortune you can do it um, very very cheap um, if not for free um, so we've I've pruned the the red currant bush now. Um, I've got a load of sticks uh, that I've cut off here, all varying sizes. So uh, there's quite a few here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them up. Um, we're going to try and propagate them um, and see how they come out. You know, uh, in doing that, I can increase my yield. I can get a, another few bushes in there. I bought that bush last year, as I said, and it's done really well. But I, I want to put some more in. I want to get some more bushes in there. Um, so we can increase our, our yield, you know, because the kids really enjoyed the red currants off of there last year. Um, and a great way to do it without it costing you anything. You've got to prune it anyway, because if you don't, as I said, you know, it just maintains the health of the plant and increases, um, or it, it, you know, it helps with the, you know, in, improve the growth for next year or this year. Um, and those cuttings, rather than frying them in the bin or in the compost, you can pot them up you know it's going to take a year before they root properly and before you can plant them out but it's worth having a go and and what i intend to do is is do a load i've got more than i need i'm probably only going to put another couple in the ground there um and then f f the what the ones that are left over i'm going to use you know i'm going to give them to people give them to people to encourage them to grow um use them for seed swaps or plant swaps and and stuff like that um which i intend to um start doing in the local community around here so um on the on the lines of trying to keep the cost down uh, compost can be expensive you haven't got compost bin if you've got a small garden you haven't got, haven't got the space to do it i've never had my own compost um i'm gonna do it this year 
um, but it's going to take a year or so for that to be ready. Um, but to, to keep that cost down, if you've got decent soil um, in your garden, you, you don't have to fill the pot completely with compost. You can use some of the soil. I mean, I know I've got decent soil. I haven't tested it or anything. Um, but I filled up sort of a third of the pot there with soil, and I'll put compost on and sort of mix it all in. Um, but I know that the soil's good because if I dig up like a small section of, of, the, of the dirt then I have I can get loads of worms out of that in the summer we get so many worms in the ground um, and to me that's a good indication that the soil's pretty healthy pretty rich um, so yeah I'm gonna I, I don't fill the whole thing up if I'm planting seeds then yes I will use just compost um, because it can be a bit um, a bit clay our soil here and, and maybe a bit dense so it's not great for seeds but for stuff like this it's perfect so I'll fill it up I'll put the rest up with compost um, and then we'll plant them in so um, yeah let's, uh, let's go and do that okay so here we are um, I filled the rest of the pot up with, with some compost you can see there so you know it's just saved a bit of money and I've taken these cuttings um, some of them are a bit long um, some of them are, are pretty good but you know I've, I've read things about like sort of chopping down to certain buds and bits and pieces like that but I think you know it's pretty a natural process isn't it um, the only thing is I would recommend is you stick them around the side um, around the side of the pot uh, so that um, they've got a bit of support so I'm going to stick them around push them down pretty far uh, I'll get some of the smaller ones and do them first you know these may be a little bit close together but to be fair it's just trial and error you know you've just got to, you've got to have a go um, and see how you get on I mean at the end of the day again it hasn't cost anything to do this so if it doesn't cost you anything it's a lot easier to, to have a play around whereas if you're buying the plants for you know 20 30 quid down the garden center um, you know, it, it might it might not be worth you playing around with it. Uh, and what I didn't mention as well with the the cuttings of the uh, you know of the red currant, um, you should wait a year. So that plant is you know just over a year old now, um, and that's probably the perfect time to start doing that. Um, but yeah, you you want to make sure it's it's been in the ground for a year and got its you know root structure in and all that before you start cutting it back. So. That's what I'm going to do. I might stick one in the middle as well. But that is it, you know. Then I'm just going to give it a little water. Um, I've got, I've got my, my kid's little duck watering can there. If it's got some water in it. Uh, not really. <laughs> so I'll have to go and fill that up. Um, I'll go and fill that up. But yeah, just have a go. If you've got any um, softwood plants, anything like that you can do cuttings just stick them in and just see what happens it doesn't cost you anything just a bit of time it's worth having a go um and it's gonna you know increase your yield without costing you anything so okay so they're all potted up um yeah just leave them there um like i said that they're gonna stay in them pots now um at least until uh, probably next um this time next year really they're gonna stay in their pots for a year before i put them out in the ground um you know, I may check them if I start getting some growth from them. I may separate them so that I can give them away, you know, uh, in swaps and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to do the exact same with the wisteria. Um, I'm, that needs pruning as well. Um, and again, it's a great time to, to prune um, softwood um, plants. And uh, yeah, that's the same. So I'm going to trim that back and I'm going to pot some of them up as well and see if, uh, see if I can get some of them to grow. Um, and again, it's all completely free, which is <laughs> the, the best part of it. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you to get out there, um, get some gardening done and uh, grow some stuff from the cuttings that you make in your garden. And, uh